गुरु ब्रह्मा गुरु विष्णु गुरु देवो महेश्वरा गुरु साक्षात परम ब्रह्मा तस्मै श्री गुरुवे नमः सो नाइस टू बी हियर अमंग फ्रेंड्स सो वी कैन हैव अ इंटरनल डिस्कशन अमंग फ्रेंड्स देर सो मेनी लर्नेड पीपल हु हैव स्पोकन बिफोर मी सो मेनी लर्नेड पीपल स्पीकिंग आफ्टर मी but i'm going to raise one or two interesting questions which is what is the biggest institutional source of hindu dvesha in the world what is the biggest institutional source of hindu dvesha in the world i will leave okay what else any other anybody wants to speak okay i'll i'll make a church okay anybody else okay here here i'm going to go out on a limb the biggest source of hindu dvesha in the world is the indian state is the state of india okay if the state of india belonged to our civilization our challenges would be much 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 lesser right so the hindu state the the indian state in all ways in fact you'd be surprised far more conversion happened in the northeast after we got independence than before we got independence almost the entire northeast has been converted after independence okay so the indian state in every way has actually been the biggest challenge that hindus face this is the the reason why you know we talk about the hindu temples being controlled by the by the indian state which means that all of the ways all of the financial uh, uh, donations that the hindus put are confiscated by the state and used for ends other than for for hindus even more importantly all of the education system is controlled by the state and that education system systematically deracinates hindu children from their own tradition so more has happened in the last 70 years in terms of deracination of hindus systematically as a massive process by the indian state than happened anywhere else right so unless we realize that this is you know and and the this this indian state has never really been an advocate for hindu issues you know so if, whether you take the executive or you take the judiciary you know we can go into detail of the judiciary i don't think the british would have been able to do something like sabari mala i don't think the british would have been able to do something like banning jallika to so many of the things that the indian state is able to carry on without massive protest would not have been possible even in british time because in the british times there was still a resistance where we saw this as an alien state right but once we fail to recognize that this is actually a big problem the state is actually systematically eroding our institutions our capabilities of response our capabilities to project our power in the world then we have to start with the solutions that begin right here it's one of the reasons i actually moved from the us to india just a few months ago saying that i can keep i've been fighting and and talking about the problems in the us and us academia you know i wrote a critique of encarta you know 20 years ago i've been talking about all these issue the the srot of the ganga is here this is this is where all the problems are coming from because we can keep fighting the effects of it in the us one of the reasons why the us academy also is so much against hindus yes of course there's the church yes there's the marxists there all of that is there it's because the indian people the indian left who went from indian academia to the us academia are the biggest factors even even the politicians who are pushing this caste thing they are all shema sawant and all of the people who actually come from seattle all of these are people who who came from india and they are the biggest hindu dvesha proponents in the us and if there was a home team if there was a home team there that was actually representing hindu culture that that was representing indian culture 
we would easily give the Harvards a run for their money because it's our own people all over the all over the world in these elite institutions. But we lost our people and we lost them here, right? Because we lost them here, they are not able to not only not represent us in global academia and global media. Imagine how influence influential these Indians are, these Hindus, so-called Hindus are all over the world in academia and media. But we have lost we have lost that generation. We have lost those people. So rather than being our advocates, they're actually going there and being our biggest opponents. So the sroth of that river is here. So we have to really look at what is it that we are doing in India and in the Indian state that is causing these problems. So I've, I've mentioned a couple of things. The, the academia is there, the Indian state in terms of control of temples, in terms of framing of laws. But there is one aspect in which the Indian state uh, has kind of, it's embedded in the DNA, which is this notion of minority privileges. So, um, and this is actually across the board, it's, it's so surprising, even I talk to so-called, you know, very, um, you know, staunch Hindu organizations and, and speak about that. And they've all bought in one way or the other that minorities must have special privileges. Now, where does this come from? Where does this whole idea of minority privilege come from? It comes from actually the minority rights discourse that's happening in Europe. And it's happening during the Hundred Year War. It's happening when there is a huge conflict in Europe between the Protestants and the Catholics, right? So when there's this huge com uh, 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 conflict happening between the Protestants and the Catholics, as soon as a state become, became Catholic, it would very quickly start persecuting all the Protestants within it. And as soon as the state became Protestant, it would start persecuting the Catholics within it. So when they were seeing that, and this is all, we're talking about minority Christians group, flavors of, different flavors of Christianity, they said, no, no, we need to have some notion of minority rights. So even the, if there are a few Protestants left in the Catholic state, they would not be persecuted. Now, the, the issue with that when applied to India is, India never has a history of minority persecution. It's not even an issue for us. Minority persecution only happens when you have a totalitarian exclusivist religious ideology which is behind that idea. So because Christianity itself is exclusivist, it believes that everybody who's outside the, uh, you know, its fold is going to hell. The Catholic Church itself believes, uh, you know, that, that there's no salvation outside the church. So anybody who didn't belong to the church was going to hell. Similarly, when Martin Luther came with his, with his critique of the, the church, he said, you know, the church is actually belonging to Satan. Obviously, anybody who's, who's part of it cannot be saved. So it all comes from the exclusive idea where as soon as one group would gain power, the king would convert, you know, let's say from Catholicism to, protest, uh, to, to, to being a Protestant then most of the population would also get converted because the, the churches would be taken over. So we have never had this issue. We have never had this issue of minority persecution. How then did we come up with making this such a central part of our constitution, right? Our constitution itself has several articles that say, no, 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 minority must, must have you know, the, the right to worship as they want and the right to run their educational institutions and so on and so forth. If you read the constitutional debates, it starts off actually by, by saying equality, that they, they will have equality. Well, I mean, equality is already a part of the constitution earlier on in the, in the, in the fundamental rights. So you don't have to, you don't have to restate equality. If, if everybody's equal, all the citizens are equal, you don't need to have a special section that says, you know, minorities also have the right to run education institutions because everybody has the right to run educational institutions. But this is not how it got interpreted um, by the judiciary and by subsequent uh, governments. It got interpreted as minorities have a special right, which is not given to the majority, to have their run their institutions and so only they can run institutions without interference from the government only the RTE will only apply to majority schools and it will not allow the so-called right to education act will only apply to majority schools and not to quote minority schools as a result thousands of Hindu schools converted from 
uh, from being Hindu schools to becoming Christian or Muslim schools or other schools so that they could claim minority rights. This is a very strange country in which people clamor to have minority rights. Everywhere else, the minorities clamor to have the same rights as the majority. India is the only state in the world where the majority beseeches, wishes to have the same right that the minorities have. So this is, do not consider this normal. One of the problems is that we have normalized this in the discourse in India. We've, we've said that, you know, as I said, even when I talk to Hindu groups, they say, no, 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 we have to redefine minority. It should be below a certain percentage. It's like, why? We don't need, we don't need to have this concept at all. We don't need to discriminate between people based on what religion they are following. No other country on the planet is doing that where based on the religion you are following this, you know, especially as a minority religion, the only case you are doing that is, you know, there might be Islamic states where if you follow the majority religion, you get certain rights. But you don't get special scholarships, you don't get special schemes, you don't get special schools by the state, run by the state, funded by the state, because you are not being a Hindu. So the, the Indian state is the biggest conversion machinery of converting people out of being Hindu. It is the biggest proselytizer in the world. And it has been very successful. It has actually converted more people out of, out of being Hindu than any other state. Right? So we have to look at that and say, we will not accept discrimination right here. Do away with all these fancy terminologies. Whenever you're creating a unequal system, you create some kind of narrative and justification for why that unequal system might exist, right? And we have created this narrative of, of minority rights. And when we talk about minority, they are actually, we are actually only talking about two groups. And who are these two groups? We are talking about Muslims and Christians largely, right? Very strange that we've created this whole structure of minority rights to privilege these two groups. And it just happens that these two groups are the most powerful religions in the world, right? So what we've done is we have created the notion of minority rights in India to allow the two most powerful religions in the world to have free access to completely decimate our own people. And this is what the Indian state stands for. It will protect, let us say a missionary goes into a village and the villagers have lo looked at a neighboring uh, village and they said, no, no, when these missionaries come into the village, a lot of problems happen and, you know, the people start fighting each other, they create a group and, you know, we've had a lot of conflict and the villagers say, no, we will not allow missionaries into our village. Guess who will stand in the way? The police will come up. They'll say, no, no, you cannot stop these missionaries from coming into the village. The Indian state will make sure that missionaries have freedom of access into that village. The native people do not have a right to stop them. Right? This is a result of, of all of the policies of the Indian state. So now coming back to the minority issue, one of the, you know, if, if you look at solutions, one of the things that was said here was, you know, in this session we are talking about solutions. What are the solutions that are possible? How many people believe that ghar vapasi is a solution? Is a big solution in India that we should we should convert people back? Okay, not very many people. Uh, okay, in any, in any case, I I think ghar vapasi is very important. I think our uh, civilizational genius has been actually in getting people together, and our civilizational genius has been producing this um, enormous and uh, and powerful tradition that actually helps people with the problem of life, which is how do I, how do I be happy? You know, this is a fundamental problem of, of life. What, 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 what am I here for and how, how can I be happy? This is why thousands and millions of people all over the world are doing Indian meditation techniques, they're doing yoga, they're doing dhyana, they're doing all of these things, right? But what happens if somebody actually does ghar vapsi, do you know of Jitendra Tyagi? How many people have heard of Jitendra Tyagi? Vaseem Rizvi, right? So, we speak of ghar vapsi, there's a prominent person, prominent Muslim cleric, who publicly does ghar vapsi. How many Hindus stand up for him? Does the Indian state stand up for him? No, the Indian state throws him in jail for the temerity 
of doing har vapsi right so the indian first state firstly funds conversion and then throws anybody who goes the other way into jail right plus all of our hindu organizations are completely silent on this because we don't want to upset the apple cart right we'd much rather be quiet and timid and diffident and no 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 kya zarurat thi kya kya zarurat thi aise bolne ki nahi 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 paigambar ke bare mein bola ab to jail jayega kuch ho nahi sakta so we have to really look at these issues of what is happening at home right and we have to get over दीज फॉल्स आइडिया जैसे अंग्रेजी माध्यम का भ्रमजाल पुस्तक लिखी है अभी अल्पसंख्यक का भ्रमजाल दूसरी लिखने की आवश्यकता है ये भ्रमजाल है कोई नहीं कर रहा है ऐसे हमारे को पता नहीं किसने बोल दिया माइनॉरिटी को स्पेशल राइट होती है कहीं नहीं होती हमको बेवकूफ बनाया जा रहा है ना मूर्ख बनाया जा रहा है कोई नहीं करता ऐसे when the state is saying that I will give you a scholarship if you convert from Hindu to Muslim I will give you crores of money in scholarship i will fund you to go to harvard where you will learn to be hindu phobic and you will learn to be against the indian state but the indian state will fund your scholarship to that place this is what we are doing and we are thinking this is normal this is okay this is how it's supposed to operate the indian state is funding all of this academia which is directly and clearly undermining the indian state nobody does this why are we accepting this is a normal why are we expect expecting that this should be continued right so this is the place where we have to start that change i'm going to speak only briefly about about america since you know uh, i've just come from there and i've i've worked a lot of there in a way that has been my kurukshetra but i think the problem if we actually get a solid response here if we had a solid home team if we actually put all of the intellectual assets that we have and rather than deracinate them they were actually becoming aligned to our civilization we would we would take on america easily we already doing that in other fields like people from here are now ruling all the american companies because we we have that intellectual ability to do that now we need to apply the same thing in the area of the dharma and not create this this toxic outflow which is actually causing problems all over the world for india but it's coming from india india is the root of it right so speaking of america <clears throat> couple of things all of this uh, this thing around caste that is happening there is some shadowy orgs equality uh, or you know labs and other things that are behind it it's happening because in a way also indians are successful indians are successful outside and the first thing was to south asianize them so there was a very deliberate movement to actually erase in america the term indian american and replace it by south asian american you know i have an article on this you can go go read uh, just look for south asian Uh, with my name so so that was well, that was the first wave now the second wave is to create a situation where these people can be interrogated they can be they can be kind of made more and more diffident so that our next generation of children become even more reluctant to say they are hindu because they'll be uh, you know uh, put on this this have to carry this load of having to justify caste or protect or defend or abuse or whatever but having to carry the load of the caste system because now it's become a thing there and finally <clears throat> i did an experiment where i asked chat gpt some questions i asked chat, chat gpt to give me the the woke view of hinduism the woke view of islam and the woke view of christianity and <clears throat> i'm going to share my results on twitter i was thinking of putting a slide up here but it too much uh, uh time and uh, and uh, administrative work but so I'll, i'll put it out on on my twitter at sankran but the nut, nut of it is in chat gpt in the woke view <coughs> of christianity there is criticism of christianity in the woke view of hinduism and even woke view of buddhism there is criticism of buddhism in the woke view of islam there is only defense of islam and now this is built into the ai systems right so a lot of the a, a lot of the uh the next generation is going to be taught by these systems you know you're going to be taught by these artificial intelligence systems children are going to our children are going to do their homework assignments by typing up on chat gpt and and putting the homework prompt there and all of their homework is going to get done and now institutionally structurally these biases that we are fighting among people are going to go into the ai systems and how are we going to fight that right again the source 
of the problem and the source of the solution is in India. That's why I'm here and that's why all of us really need to rise up and change this. Thank you so much.